It's been a few months since SpaceX launched one of its massive Starship rockets from its manufacturing and test facilities here in southern Texas. And right now, SpaceX is gearing up for Flight 5 of its Starship rocket. I'm Will Robinson-Smith, reporter with Space Flight Now. That launch set to happen in the very near future, and a lot's been happening down here at their Starbase facilities since Flight 4 earlier this year. So let's talk about what's on tap, not only for Flight 5, which is poised to prove out some key technical capabilities of not only the Starship rocket, but also the launch infrastructure. Catching the Super Heavy booster is its goal. We'll talk about that, some of the changes here at Starbase writ large, as well as the important things that NASA is watching for this mission and beyond as part of its overall Artemis program. The fourth time SpaceX launched Starship was back in June 2024. Like the three previous flights, Starship went further than the preceding missions, putting its iterative advances on full display. The Starship upper stage survived a fiery re-entry as it seared through the atmosphere before splashing down in the waters of the Indian Ocean. Closer to the launch site, SpaceX performed a propulsive landing of the Super Heavy booster in the Gulf of Mexico. The rocket hovered momentarily in a nod to planned recovery efforts in the future. And speaking of recoveries, in the months that followed, SpaceX recovered the aft end of the Flight 4 booster in order to gather more data from the hardware itself. This is leading up to one of the biggest hurdles SpaceX wants to clear with the Flight 5 launch, catching the Super Heavy booster. This is crucial to SpaceX's plan for rapid reusability of the rocket, since the company doesn't have plans to recover the booster on a drone ship or a landing pad like its Falcon rockets. This SpaceX animation shows the general idea. After separation, the booster will fly back to Boca Chica Beach, where the robotic arms on the launch tower, called chopsticks, will grab a hold of the booster and then gently lower it onto the orbital launch mount below. To prepare for this, SpaceX has been doing a series of tests with the chopsticks. Those included quick actuating swings to simulate a catch, using a test article to practice clamping onto the structure, and raising the super heavy booster itself up to the height where they plan to catch it. And while catching the booster is one of the marquee goals for Flight 5, it's not a guarantee, according to SpaceX. In describing the mission, the company wrote, Thousands of distinct vehicle and pad criteria must be met prior to a return and catch attempt of the Super Heavy booster, which will require healthy systems on the booster and tower, and a manual command from the mission's flight director. If this command is not sent prior to the completion of the boost back burn, or if the automated health checks show unacceptable conditions with Super Heavy or the tower, the booster will default to a trajectory that takes it to a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. That said, in the lead-up to the planned launch attempt, SpaceX leadership signaled their confidence that catching the booster on their first attempt is possible. Bill Gerstenmeier, so SpaceX's Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability, said as much during his remarks to the National Academy's Committee on Biological and Physical Sciences in Space on October 9th. We landed with a half a centimeter accuracy in the ocean, so we think we have a reasonable chance to go back to the town. Since Starship will be used as the lander, which will take humans to the surface of the moon as part of the Artemis program, NASA also has a keen interest in the development of Starship. Prior to the fourth flight of Starship, Lisa Watson Morgan, the head of NASA's Human Landing System program, described her anticipation of seeing the booster return, noting that it's a precursor to SpaceX testing the relighting of a Raptor vacuum engine on a future launch. Each uh, flight test, they're able to do a little more and a little more. And once they're able to uh, get the soft water landing, then it's only a matter of time, really, before they do a return to launch sign uh, and land on the, you know, back on the pad where they launch, which that will be incredibly exciting um, and quite an accomplishment. Um, but again, that's just building on what they've been doing in the past on other programs that SpaceX has. Uh, and then I think thereafter, we will see the relight of the Raptor. And so, yes, it is a future goal and it will be something that's, that's required and we will need to see that. In addition to the booster recovery, SpaceX also wants to see an improved re-entry of the Starship upper stage. To that end, SpaceX, quote, did a complete rework of its heat shield. SpaceX technicians spent more than 12,000 hours replacing the entire thermal protection system with newer generation tiles, a back of ablative layer, and additional protections between the flap structures, SpaceX wrote. This massive effort, along with updates to the ship's operations and software for re-entry and landing burn, will look to improve upon the previous flight 
and bring Starship to a soft splashdown at the target area in the Indian Ocean. The dynamic changes built into Flight 5 have also been the reason why it hasn't launched yet. Back on August 8th, SpaceX posted on X, formerly Twitter, stating Flight 5, Starship, and Super Heavy are ready to fly, pending regulatory approval. A little more than a month later, on September 10th, SpaceX published a lengthy blog post to its website, making the case for being able to launch Flight 5 as soon as possible. The company again stated it was ready to launch, quote, since the first week of August. We recently received a launch license date estimate of late November from the FAA, the government agency responsible for licensing Starship flight tests, SpaceX wrote. This is a more than two-month delay to the previously communicated date of mid-September. This delay was not based on a new safety concern, but instead driven by superfluous environmental analysis. The four open environmental issues are illustrative of the difficulties launch companies face in the current regulatory environment for launch and re-entry licensing. A day later, during the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's Global Aerospace Summit, Dan Murray, the executive director of operations safety for the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, insisted that the FAA's relationship with SpaceX was a good one. In response to questions from Bloomberg space reporter Lauren Grush, he said, while the agency prefers to deal directly with SpaceX instead of litigating disputes in public, he pointed back to environmental considerations as the driver of the Flight 5 timeline. Tensions continued to brew in public as various lawmakers began weighing in on SpaceX's behalf. One such instance led to this exchange during the September 24th hearing of the Aviation Subcommittee of the House Transportation Committee between Representative Kevin Kiley, a Republican from California where SpaceX is headquartered, and Mike Whitaker, the FAA Administrator. The exchange concerned what Whitaker described as public safety concerns when it came to both the sonic boom created by the proposed return to landing site operation and SpaceX's water deluge system. Are the reasons for this delay, which is you know moving the launch back from what was previously communicated, are the reasons for the delay safety related? Well, the first reason of delay was that um, SpaceX <clears throat> failed to provide an updated sonic boom analysis. So there was a 30 day delay due to that. Uh, and then the latest delay was their failure to comply with Texas law, which is a prerequisite to getting a, a, a launch permit. Okay, so assuming for the sake of argument that's true, but these are not safety-related reasons. Um, I, th I think the sonic boom analysis is a safety-related in incident. Um, so I you think the two-month delay is necessary to assure a safe launch? I think the two-month delay is necessary to comply with the, the launch requirements, and I think that's an important part of safety culture. Following the hearing, SpaceX submitted a letter to Representative Kylie arguing that Administrator Whitaker made false assertions about SpaceX. With respect to Starship, neither of the two items he referenced, including the sonic boom, are related to public safety, but to environmental considerations that had been previously evaluated as posing no risk to the environment, SpaceX wrote. Additionally, his assertion that SpaceX violated state law is simply wrong. SpaceX did not violate state law. SpaceX had a permit for deluge operations from Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Given all of that context, it came as a surprise to many when, on Monday, October 7th, SpaceX announced its intention to launch Flight 5 no earlier than Sunday, October 13th. Reached for comment, the FAA issued the following statement. In mid-August, SpaceX submitted new information for its proposed Starship slash Super Heavy Flight 5 mission. The FAA is continuing to review this information the FAA will make a licensing determination once SpaceX has met all licensing requirements. With no mention of November in this latest quote, an October launch is in the realm of possibility. While all this back and forth has progressed, SpaceX has been busy developing the footprint of its Starbase campus in Texas. Against the wall of a new parking structure, a mural is taking shape, 
offering a glimpse into the multi-planetary future often referenced by SpaceX. That sits beside the expansive manufacturing complex, housing various pieces of development hardware, including the newer iterations of the Raptor engines. And further down the road, a second launch tower, taller than the first, is nearing completion. Its presence alongside the original tower will be necessary to support an increased launch cadence, which will allow SpaceX to fulfill its Artemis obligations, which include an on-orbit propellant transfer from a tanker starship to the human landing system variant. So HLS Deputy Manager Dr. Kent Shinaki says they are working to have Starship ready in time for a September 2026 launch of the Artemis 3 mission. I think that that is definitively the date we're working towards. We don't have any known roadblocks. We do have some first time things that have to be demonstrated and we have a plan in place to go demonstrate those. But I mean, there are first time things. Sometimes there are things that get that, that bite you. And so we are working through those, but there are no known road, roadblocks to achieving that. SpaceX says it's ready to launch its Starship rocket on flight number five as soon as October 13th, pending regulatory approval. Reporting at Starbase in Southern Texas, Will Robinson-Smith for Spaceflight Now.